You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I am Brother Zana David. This is the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. I want us to pray before we go into the Word. Savior and King, you are sufficient in your own wisdom. You are the fountain of knowledge. You are the originator of everything called wisdom. In your own wisdom, you fashioned this world. Some thousands of years ago, you have a plan. You sent us here so that at our own separate times, we can come, stay, and go back to you. Lord, me and those of us who are listening to the sound of my voice right now, this is our time to pass through this world. What is our purpose of being here? Why are we here? Lord, direct our hearts unto wisdom that we may understand the purpose of life and not get deceived. We ask that you open the heavens and speak to us, your children. Give us true understanding of your, of our purpose of existence here. We cover our hearts and our minds with the blood of Jesus. We ask that as your word comes out with power, even those who are sick in their spiritual lives and their mortal bodies, would receive divine healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Today we want to talk about the true meaning of life you do not know. The true meaning of life you do not know. If you look at the world today, you'll discover that a lot of people are living their lives the way they understand life. What is the main purpose of life? Why are we here? What are we exactly doing in this place? Are we here in this world to grow up after being born by our parents? Have a good degree from the university or from the college? Get a good job? Get married? Have children? Amass wealth? Prepare for our retirement? Ask God to give us long life, have the long life, grow old, and see our great-great-grandchildren. And then some proceed to the level of even preparing their own resting place, their own grave. Why are we here? Is this what you call success? When I see the level of chaos in our society today, when I see the way a lot of people live their lives, I ask myself the simple question, do we really know the purpose of our existence in this place? If we know, I think we wouldn't have been living our lives this way. I have come to a very strong conclusion that life is vanity is the truth life is vanity the only gain in this world is Christ now I want to look at the things that Solomon said in, the, in Ecclesiastes and also third John and what Jesus Christ said. Why are we really here? Are we, do you think um, that you came into this place because there was a biological mistake? Is that what you think? No. <laughs> it is more than that. It is risky to be in this planet as a human being because it either lands you 
in a place of eternal joy or it lands you in a place of eternal destruction so it is risky when i see people born into this world and they are not if if life is not fair to them or if they are not being taken good care of by their parents or guardians i feel very very bad because that person is being endangered the eternal place eternal resting place of that person is endangered the bible says that we should train up a child in the way he should go when he's old he will not depart from it so if you do not give the good a good upbringing to a child definitely you are training a child in a way that the child should go and that way could lead to eternal destruction there's a lot of chaos on earth because majority of people who come to this world don't know why they are here and apart from that too a lot of people who find themselves in this world they don't end up well why because they feel that success in life is buying good cars, living a good life, have children, and then make a name for yourself, and most, most importantly, enjoy yourself while you are alive. And I've seen people drinking alcohol and getting drunk in the name of we only have this life to live and now that you have it enjoy yourself is this what is life meant for no never so let's look at ecclesiastes chapter one i have a number of verses to read so i will try and read as fast as possible vanities or vanities see the preacher this is Ecclesiastes chapter 1, 2 to 6. Vanities of vanities, all is vanity. What profit had a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also riseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth. To his place where he rose the wind goeth toward the south and turn it and turn it about unto the north it welleth about continually and the circuit return return it again according to his circuit so we see solomon questioning the real purpose of life that what is the big deal about being here in this world his first statement is vanity upon vanity vanity of vanities and that is the truth vanity of vanities he repeated it twice the truth is that life is vanity Please, if you're watching this video, be patient with me and make sure you finish watching the video because I'm going to take you through a journey. And you have, if you have not subscribed, subscribe to this channel. And again, please don't just watch this video alone. Share it with someone. Let's move on. Verse 7, Ecclesiastes 1, 7 to 11. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, they that they return again. All things are full of labor, men cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that had been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, 
is, a, is that we shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It had already of old time. It had, it had been already of old time. Which was before us? Verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. with those that shall come after let's move on verses 12 to 11 i the preacher was king over israel in jerusalem and i gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the sun this is solomon the wisest man that ever lived according to the Bible and that is the truth if you read this work you will know that this man was really wise so he searched he was doing his own research and he carried out a lot of experiments one of which is that he had a counter with 1,000 women 700 wives and 300 concubines in a lifetime in one lifetime he experimented a lot of things and before he departed he had to put down his experience everything he found out through the wisdom that god has given to him and this is his experience and I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the heaven. This saw travail had God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and physician of spirit. This is the truth. All you see is vanity. You may say, oh, Hosanna, you've not tasted life. If you have a taste of the pleasures of this world, you won't say that life is not vanity. Now, I want to ask you a question. You that enjoy so well, is it not the same death that is going to strike the poor man that will strike you? Are you not going down six feet or than it? Everybody is six feet. This earth is vanity. I've drawn my conclusion a long time ago and I have my own resolutions. And they serve as a basis of my lifestyle. If you know how I live my life, you will know that I am serious about what I'm saying now. I am very, very serious about it because I know that this world is passing away and all the glory in it. You may not hear this kind of preaching often because Unfortunately, uh, Jesus warned people against the dangers of wealth more than how many times he talks about the gifts of wealth, the goodness of wealth. Today, uh, warnings are vanishing away from the church not all denominations not all congregations in a way but most of our churches the place that's supposed to we're supposed to go to get constant reminder of where we are going to has become a place where we are constantly reminded of 
how we need to prosper in this world without the prosperity of our soul. Sometimes you see men of God telling some good stories of prosperity and instead of you to start appreciating God for the little you have, you become confused and you start asking God, God, why am I so poor? Why am I doing so badly? We, majority of us, have lost it. And it is time to begin to understand that we are not here for just coming here sick. Life has its own meaning. And if you don't know the true meaning of life, it is going to be very, very disastrous. I mean, the way you are going to end up will be disastrous. Because if the use of a thing is not known, abuse is definitely inevitable. This is why a lot of people abuse their own lives. What is the true meaning of life? Are we here to have grandchildren, great-grandchildren? We see people's obituary, posters, transition. We see it. We announce the barrier of a life of uh, our father of uh, how is it written life well spent life well spent <laughs> and transition to glory <laughs> these are men's languages how do you know the person is transiting to glory oh so the person because the person had a lot of cars because the person had children and grandchildren so you mean that is a definition of a life well spent sorry when we attend funerals barriers and you see the preacher talking about how the person actually succeeded a, a lot of us we get carried away and we just pray oh god i pray that my own should be this glorious so do you mean that John was a failure because he died, uh, he spent about 30 years, he was like 8 months older than Jesus Christ and then uh, it was when Jesus Christ started his ministry that he was killed. So if Jesus started his ministry when he was 30 years old then john died about 30 years old or let me say about 31 years old so john never had a child he was never married his father was a high, was a high priest by inheritance he's supposed to be a priest he's supposed to be in the temple receiving tithes and receiving um, offerings but he never did that so do you mean that John was a failure? But remember what Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 11. He said of all men born of woman, none is greater than John. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So Jesus Christ knows that John was a special person in the kingdom of God. He was so special that Jesus Christ had to describe his position, his ranking. But this is someone according to human um, human classification and human assessment. John was a total failure. Probably he died before his parents. No child. No building. I don't even believe that John dug his own grave before he died. 
which was very important in his own time but he was rich john was rich according to his destiny fulfillment he did everything and he went home gloriously what is the purpose of life i want to ask you this question do you know why you are here me i know exactly why i am here do you know why you are here i'm living my life to the best that i can i know this is not the best god wants for me but i am doing exactly what i am born to do i knew i would be a pastor even when i was still a child i knew it after before i graduated from senior high school i told my two brothers that i will do god's work so let me try to settle you i don't know how i'm going to start but i have the call of god upon my life and i prepared for it do you know why you are here many people have been carried away you want to succeed like your neighbor you want to succeed like the other person you were looking at your age mates you've forgotten that there is no destiny mate let me tell you my life is my life and i'm going to live it the very way i understand my destiny i'm not going to copy another person's life and paste it into my own your story is your story my story is my own story i don't need to copy your story and paste it into my life because i am here for a reason and i have to do that i know a lot of people question a lot of things about my life but i don't care about what they say i know i am here to work i know i am here to pass through and i don't want to listen to what people are saying what are you here for do you know the real meaning of life what is the true meaning of life there is a true meaning of life a lot of people do not know and that is why they are living their lives the way they want and not according to God's own plans for their lives what why are we here are you succeeding in life now let me tell you something if you are succeeding if you have real success let's read this passage together third john verses one to four the elder according the elder unto the well beloved gaius whom i love in the truth he loves gaius in the truth Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospered. This is prosperity. As your soul is already getting along, I want you, I wish you to be in health, be in good health. I want you to have the basic things of life and prosper in life as your soul is already prospering this is the true definition of prosperity are you prospering or you are in this life and wasting away wasting the resources that the Lord brought you away Let's continue with this passage before I go to the next passage. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth so 
Gaius knew very well that prosperity is that of walking in the truth. And in walking in the truth, you have to make sure that your soul prospers. And people saw it that this man, Gaius, was walking in the truth. He was living his life according to the revelation of the truth. Do you live your life according to truth? Or according to the challenges you get from social media? Someone sent me a short clip, a video today, and said, This is how I wish my children are. Two small children of about like five, um, six years, maybe four, five, six years. And they were relating in a very loving way, a brother and his sister. And she said, This is how I was, I, I actually wish my children to be and she said but mine they are not like that and I told her listen God gave you the best you're supposed to have I told her body odor cannot be detected from a beautiful picture posted on social media and that is the truth a lot of us get carried away. You see people snap pictures with cars. We question God why we don't have our own. We see people getting married and flaunting their children. We ask ourselves questions. Oh, why is it that I don't have mine? Let me tell you, those things are good. But is that the whole definition of life? If that's the whole definition of life, that means Jesus Christ was a failure. It means John the Baptist was a total failure. It means Jeremiah was a complete failure. Do we even know our individual destinies, our assignments in this world, and what we need to fulfill while in the flesh? Now, let's read Revelation chapter 3, 17 and 18. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This is the letter of Jesus Christ to the Laodicean church. They were so proud. They thought they were doing so well. They thought that they were prospering. But Jesus Christ told them that no. You, 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 you. You are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Why? Because they lack gold that is tried in the fire. And because of that they were poor they were poor because they like they lack white raiment so they were naked their eyes were blind because they hadn't been anointed i know a lot of people insult me when they hear that I set up a charity organization. They insult me. They say, has he been able to feed himself? Has he been able to feed himself? So why should someone receiving uh, less than $100 be talking about setting up a charity organization? But it has existed since 2017. And I know that I am rich. Yes, not according to people's assessment, but according to my destiny. That is what I am born to do. It is what I am born to do. 
I know I can't help everybody in the world, but it gives me joy. There is no better joy that I will get than from preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ, even in the midst of the numerous temptations and persecutions, and also helping those in need. It is my joy. I get fulfillment from it. I know it is not easy, but that is my calling. And because I do what I have been called to do, I find joy, I find fulfillment doing it. Do you know what you have been called to do? You don't need to live like me because you have your own assignment. The Lord told me, He didn't call me to go and win and run ministry among Muslims. That's not my call. But there are people that God has called even into the same evangelical ministry. And the assignment is to just go and convert Muslims. But that's not my call. But I'm called into evangelical and teaching ministry and also reaching out to the body of Christ what are you called to do if you are doing it it means if you are doing it and you have this gold tried in the fire the crown of gold that is laid ahead of you if you have it it means you are rich, no matter how poor people see you to be. The church of the Laodicean, they felt that they, have, they had everything they needed. But according to Jesus Christ's own assessment, they were very, very poor. Are you poor in the sight of God? Are you poor? In God's own sight are you poor or you are rich what is God's assessment of your life are you doing what God asks you to come and do in this world now let me tell you the truth we are here for a season we are passing through this world Um, let me bring out a scripture for you. Just read the scriptures with me. Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 and 6 and then chapter 5 verse 10. And from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever verse 10 chapter 5 verse 10 and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth let me tell you something you may not have heard before do you think that God was so bored in heaven that he had to create the earth who told you that God never knew that man would fall before creating him who told you that God did not know that the earth would become what it is today oh so if it is so do we need to question God do we need to summon him and ask him why he created a world that he knew would end up in destruction <laughs> we can't use our own limited knowledge to judge the God that has all knowledge God is a fountain of all wisdom. 
If he chooses to do it, fine. But let me, I'm not going to speak much on, on this, but let him who has ears hear what I'm going to say now. Heaven lost a lot of angels. Let me open my Bible and read for you Revelation chapter 12. Heaven lost a lot of angels. Probably the creation of this world is to replace the lost multitudes. Heaven lost thousands if not millions of angels. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 verse 4 and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to deliver her child as to devour her child as soon as it was born Look at verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not. Neither was there, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Look at verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. God lost heaven, lost thousands, if not millions of angels. Listen. We are their replacement. This is my very strong belief. We are their replacement. And we are not just going to be in heaven and later come to the new Jerusalem, the city of God, and not just have the body of angels, but we are going to be made kings and priests. We are going to be made kings and priests unto God. Do you know what that means? And in Revelation 5 verse 10 says, We shall reign on the earth. There is something I outline in my Bible in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. I outline them and I know why I outline them. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. To him that overcometh. Now, verse um, chapter 2, verse 7. To him that overcometh. Will I give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God? Then, verse 11. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Verse 17. To him that overcometh will I give to it of the hidden manna. And in the, and in the stone... And will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving, saving him that received it. Are you seeing it to him that overcometh? We are here to pass through. If there is no war, there is no need to say to him that overcomes. What are you overcoming? 
before you become a king and a priest unto our God, you need to overcome Christians. This is not about amassing wealth and having all the children in the world and living 120 years in this world. That is not the true meaning of life. The true meaning of life is, end, is ending up as a priest and as a king ready to reign with Christ on earth in the new world that is coming we are the replacement of angels that fell we are a new breed unto God and we shall have the body of angels when I see Christians sometimes praying probably they are married for some years and they are praying and asking God to bless them with children and you could see them praying and crying so much you see the anguish in their hearts you pity them I'm not saying it's bad to cry unto God to cry but me I don't cry like that because I don't see I don't attach that level of value to the things of this world even money I don't attach that level of value to money uh, many years ago when I was still young I used to say we were really very poor and I used to say if I have money in this world I won't use it to do anything one day my mom scolded me she said Zena why are you talking rubbish how can you be saying so are you going to waste your money one day I explained to her that mama if I have money in this world I will give everything to the poor and by the grace of God I'm practicing it and before I leave this world I am not leaving cars and houses in this world without wheeling all of them out listen the true meaning of life is spending 75 years old or 120 years or just 15 years or 20 years or 30 years or 50 or 70 years and go and reap at the other side of life oh let me tell you we are here to choose positions for ourselves there are things that determine the position we are going to hold in heaven what are those things um, I did actually plan to talk about these things today but let me just say a few things about them what determines one's position in heaven what are the determining factors of our positions in heaven number one who did god create you to be for instance jeremiah he was before he was born before he was formed in his mother's womb he had already been ordained he has been he had been called to be a prophet so your purpose of creation like Moses also was created to lead the children of Israel out of the promised land and also to be the one that will God would use um, the uh, servant of God God will use when setting up the Old Testament the Old Covenant So, depending on your assignment from God, then again, how did you live your life? Did you live according to that assignment? Number three, how faithful were you in that assignment? Like, look at John the Baptist. He was called, he was sent into this world with the spirit of Elijah to prepare the way of the Lord. And he, he did everything excellently well according to what 
is written about him. Then again, what are the good works you have done? Did you do good works? How faithful we are you to God? Everybody that makes it into heaven, that has the free gift of salvation, that makes it into heaven, are not going to be equal in heaven. Some people are going to have stars in their crown. Recently, I told myself that, Hosanna, you are not here to live, you are here to work. And I wrote it down. I am not here to live, I am here to work. I'm not here just to exist, but I am here to work. If God gives me, for instance, if God gives me maybe uh, 120 years to spend in this world, or if he gives me like even 50 years to spend in this world, I want to use it very well. I don't want to mess around with these years. I want to use it well. I want to work. There is a place where we are going to live forever. Compared to this side of life, we are not actually here to live. We are here to work. You are here to work for eternity. I remember a dream I had some time ago. And in a dream, I saw a place in heaven. And there was a priest. Uh, he died some years ago, according to my understanding of the dream. He died some years ago. And before he died, he used to have a petrol station, like a gas station, with a man. And then before this man of God died, he wheeled his own path to a widow, a poor woman. And then he died. So, when what I saw was that the the other man that co-owned the gas station with him later died and he got to heaven and saw the man of God counting money in heaven and he looked at the money and he said these are the sales of today in the world you know there is a way you arrange your own money and if you see the money, probably if the money is stolen, you could know. You will be able to tell that this is your money. So he saw the money. The priest, the man of God was counting the money in heaven. And he said, this, are, this is the sale we made today before I died. And the man of God explained to him that, oh, listen. From the day I wield my portion to... The poor woman in the world, since that day, the whole seeds have been coming to me, including your own part. I don't know why the part of the man who did not wield his own was everything was going to the man of God in heaven. Listen, I don't want to go to heaven and be a slave. It's time to work. I'm telling you this so that you will know that there is no need to get carried away by the things of this world. Solomon had everything it takes to be a man. But he said, vanity of vanities. All is vanity. He had 1,000 women. If you see someone who is old and he is coming from where you were going to, if he tells you, if you see him crying and coming back and telling you that this road leads to destruction and you are happy going down there because there is sugar, because there is honey, you see an old man telling you that he has wasted all his years, wasted everything traveling that path and you are happy going down the same lane 
I think it is worse than being stupid. Solomon once traveled the path of pleasure. He had all the money, he had all the wine, he had all the women, he had everything. He said he did not restrain his heart from anything. He was ready to give his heart everything that his heart wanted. But before he died, he confessed that everything is vanity. Listen to Solomon. Verse 10. And uh, this is Ecclesiastes 2.10. And whatsoever man eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, any joy. This is an open confession. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. He did not withhold any kind of pleasure that his heart, his eyes desired from himself. He was ready to give himself everything that his heart desired. But at the end of it, he said, all these things, everything is vanity. Thank God he turned around and corrected his ways before he died. Do you know that there are people who leave this world weeping and crying? The essence of today's message is to let you know that we are not just here to live life, have children, marry the best husband, enjoy ourselves, prepare for our retirement, and go. We are here to work. I am telling you, don't just go to heaven. But go to heaven with some level of degrees. Go to heaven with some stars in your crown. Don't just go there. Don't just be a member of the kingdom, but be a stakeholder in this kingdom. Don't let anything deprive you of entering this kingdom. The most important thing on earth is to live the way God wants you to live and end up in a eternal place of rest. Don't go to the other side where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a hymn someone wrote some years ago. Must I go an empty handed? Must I go an empty and empty handed? Thus my Redeemer, thus my dear Redeemer meets. Not one day of service give him. Lay no trophy at his feet. What are you going to lay at the feet of the one that died for you? What are you taking home? <laughs> Do you think that God is going to ask us how many degrees did you have while on earth? Do you think God is going to ask you how many bottles of wine you consumed? And how merry you made your heart? It is the work we have done we are going to present. It's not going to ask you to give account of the money in your bank account. But this is, these are the things, the things we are not going to account for are the things that are being preached to us in most congregations today. The things that are of most importance are, are left behind. What we are being told is, oh, prosperity, prosper, me, I need money too. Who told you I don't need money? I need the good things of life. But they are not my number one priority. 
That's what I'm saying. In fact, if I have a million dollars today, I already have a project. If I have that, I will build a school and make it free for people to attend and not to buy the best car in town. Let me tell you one thing. I saw <laughs> someone, we, we, we both work in the church together before I resigned. And I was in a public vehicle, and two of us were sitting in the passenger seat in the front. So two of us were there. And this was last year. And I saw a man of God. We both worked together in a church for some years. He saw me. I saw him. He was with his family in a car, and then. I called out to him, we were in a hold up, so I called out to him and greeted him. The way he looked at me, and he wasn't so happy with me, to him I am suffering that I was uh, in a public vehicle, he was in his own car with his family, I was in a public vehicle, I wasn't even comfortable because I was sharing the front seat with another passenger he looked at me just wind down greeted me horribly and wind up i was asking myself <laughs> but he never used to greeting me like that before if he sees me he would take his time to greet me and he would call me some good good names to him i was suffering and in poverty but to me i am rich i could buy that car he was driving but i choose not to have any for now the school fees of the children that i spend money on could buy two of those cars in a year but I enjoy myself. I have fulfillment in my heart. Taking the public transport, I have joy. I have my treasure somewhere. I believe that in God's own mercy, I will make it and I will reap. I believe. Everybody has where they put their treasure. I have my treasure somewhere. And my heart is there. This is my dream. It is what I told God, if I have money, this is what I will use my money for. And I'm doing it. And I'm happy. I have joy. I have fulfillment. There is nothing that is greater than fulfillment. Fulfillment is greater than success. You could live a successful life on earth and die unfulfilled. This is like someone dying and is asking, am I going to my maker with, an empty, with empty hands? Should I meet my redeemer like this? Not one day of service give him? Am I not going to lay any trophy at his feet? As a soldier, if you are a soldier man, this cast you have in your body, they are your trophy. Some of us will meet God and we have nothing to account for. You were never thrown out of school because you choose never to compromise. You did not lost your marriage because you choose never to compromise you did not lost your job because you never choose never to compromise every time you meet with temptation you always compromise so there is no trophy you will not take in anything you never sacrifice anything no day in the name of god in the name of god's kingdom you never gave 
in your local church to support the work of God. Even if you gave, it was out of your abundance, you gave just a little. What are you going to lay at his feet? Now look at the chorus. Must I go an empty handed? Must I meet my savior so? Not one soul would wish to greet him. Oh. There are Christians who do not win any soul at all. They don't win any soul. There is a message the Lord gave me a few days ago. I wrote it down. Um, I don't think the paper is here. I would have read it out. It's about soul winning. Okay, uh, I don't think it is here. It is about soul winning. Okay, I've seen it. This is it. I wrote it down. This was on the 4th of this month. I saw a plank, you know, a plank like a board, a plank, a wooden plank. And this was the inscription that was printed on it. Resound Christ if you are saved. Resound Christ like sound it resound Christ if you are saved. That was what was written on it. Then I heard a voice that said, Let everyone that is saved preach the good news to those who are not saved. I do not like the coldness among my children in evangelizing the gospel. The Lord said, Everyone, everyone that is saved should resound Christ, resound the gospel, sound the, sound the alarm, sound it. A lot of people don't preach. They don't preach. They have no reason whatsoever to preach. What are you taking to your maker? Are you going to meet him? with empty hands what are you taking to him are you going to die as a fulfilled person i am asking god to give me grace never to look back never to get carried away by money by fame by power by wealth i don't want to get carried away any day my desire is to work for him look at verse 2 stanza 2 not at death i shrink or falter for my savior saves me now but to meet him empty-handed thought of that now clouds my brow he said it's not that i'm afraid of death because i know my savior saves me now but what i'm concerned about is meeting him empty handed are you not even concerned about this is it not something that you should be worried about are you also carried away by miracle preachers prosperity preachers who care nothing about the souls of men are you also carried away let me tell you, we have a kingdom. And we are going to be kings and priests of God in this kingdom. Our bodies shall be changed. In fact, if it comes now, within twinkling of eye, we will be changed and we will put on glorious bodies. The bodies of angels. The very form of an angel. This is the essence of life. It is good to be wealthy. It's good to have children. It's good to have a good husband, a good wife, good family. It's good to build houses. But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And let these 
things I mentioned be added. Not the other way around. Don't seek the things of this world and expect the kingdom of God to be added to you. No, seek the kingdom and its righteousness and let the rest be added. Many of us are looking for discounts when we haven't bought anything. You have to buy first before you get discount. What we call jara, what we call money in our local palace here, what we call jara discount. You want the seller to add little to you as discount? Then you pay first. You have to make purchases before you talk about discount. Look at verse 4. Stanza 4. Up, ye saints, arouse. Be earnest. Up and work while yet is day. And the night of death overtake you. Strive for souls while yet you may. The darkness is coming so fast. Now, I want to repeat we are not going back to our mother's womb. Every one of us, we are on the queue. In fact, we are hurrying so fast out of this world. We are living. We are on the queue. I am ahead of some of you. Some of you are ahead of me. We are already living already. We are living already. We are on the queue. Are you ready to meet your Savior? What is the true meaning of life according to your own understanding? The true meaning of life is that we were brought here so that the earth can save us so that the earth this world can filter us and what we come out is priests and kings unto god that is what will come out What we come out will be priests and kings. Look at it. We will come out of that sieve as priests and kings unto God. Are you ready? This is a purpose. Heaven lost many angels because there was war in heaven. Are you ready to fit into this class of priests and kings unto God? Or are you carried away by the very things of this world that Jesus Christ warned against? Are you carried away? Are you ready? to follow it is my prayer that the good lord will bless his words in our hearts in jesus name let us pray O oh lord our god thank you for your word passing away like the stars of the morning we like the dews of the morning we are all passing away i can't go back to the stage of childhood again i am now an adult we are all passing away but we will be remembered by the work we have done lord help us to be faithful while still in the body help us to be faithful to the call every one of us we have our own purpose of existence sometimes we see ourselves as poor as wretched 
and as living unfulfilled lives but to you you are saying well done good and faithful servants that is a path you are already on it some of us are so blind and deaf and lack understanding Lord give us true understanding of our purpose of existence Solomon said vanity or vanities all is vanity and that is the truth help us not to get carried away help us never to get carried away by the flashy things of this world and Lord I pray for as many who have looked back that you will help them to recover their own calling and be faithful to the end I pray for as many who are listening to me right now receive grace to overcome the trials of this life may you never look back in the name of Jesus Christ pray for as many who are facing one challenge or the other Lord step into their situations and speak that same word peace still today I say to that situation in your life peace be still receive everything you need to prosper in this world may your soul also prosper be equipped with everything you need to prosper in this world in the name of Jesus Christ for those who have been carried away, Lord, send your word that is like a double-edged sword and a hammer that breaketh rock into pieces. Send that word to them. Lord, we pray for those who do not know you, who have been carried away and they don't know the true meaning of existence in this world. Lord, help them to know you. Thank you, Lord, for us in our prayer. I pray for as many who have been supporting our ministry, that, Lord, you will help them, support them, bless them abundantly. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Please share this video. If you're watching this video, share this video with someone. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. In case you want to give your life to Christ, don't forget to contact me. Um, this is my contact details on the screen. You can use these details on the screen to contact me. Social media at Ozana e. David. My website is ozanadavid.com and our ministry website tnwcfan.org God bless you.